At this motorbike battery factory in southwest China, assembly line workers are more concerned about spot welds than spot prices. But costs for the metals they handle every day have swung wildly over the past six months, with zinc and lead now down over 50%. As management is all too aware, the result is an unstable operating environment for companies like this that keep inventories tight and procure stock every month when needed. In the market, metal producers don't want to produce anymore, and sellers wait for the price to go up. As for buyers, if it's not urgent, they don't buy, so the market is very depressed. China's GDP is expanding by around 9%, but it feels as if the dream of sustained growth has gone up in smoke. The fundamental problem is credit, which all but evaporated in the summer of 2008. Steel production led a downhill race, a 26% decline in Q3, with mills unable to finance facility upgrades or even stock up on iron ore, coke and coal. The metals market fell at a time when global demand weakened. Although hopes were high that China could sufficiently decouple from the world's woes, clearly it still joined at the hip with the West. The second half exports out of China has really started to have a larger impact on you know, the whole global or the whole Chinese growth story. You've seen IP slow, GDP slow. And look, when you combine that with the property sector, which has also come under a lot of pressure in the residential segment, you've really got a double whammy. China's building industry has a huge influence on steel, aluminium, copper and of course cement prices. In China, the labour cost is comparatively cheap, so the material cost takes up 70% of the total cost and 50 to 60% in more advanced construction. Therefore, the material price has a big effect on the total cost of the buildings, and the price is related to the success of the real estate market. And in China, another star sector isn't shining as bright as before. There's still growth in auto sales, 11% in the first nine months of 2008, but this compares with 22% for the whole of 2007. So again, demand is weaker and margins have shrunk. Many of the country's 52 brands are struggling, especially those locked into peak price contracts for aluminium supplies. In recent years, material prices have risen, but now they've dropped. We didn't predict that this would happen. Now our priority is to renegotiate this agreement. At China's macro level, the government has revised its spending plans through a $570 billion headline-grabbing stimulus package, with heavy spending on roads, railways and utilities, which will boost demand for commodities. But 80% of this cash was actually earmarked in 2006 under Beijing's current five-year plan well before the financial crisis. So the markets have already factored in significant commodity needs. Nonetheless, according to Macquarie Securities, the new additional spending could increase the demand for steel by up to 10%, and this may help to boost iron ore prices in late 2009. Caution, however, is the buzzword, as production over capacity exists, and dormant mills may come back on stream as prices become more attractive. In terms of hard cash, leading analysts have revisited their commodity projections for 2009, given the rapid slowdown in global demand and consumption. Steel is marked down 23%. Coking coal down 60%. Aluminium down 30%. Copper down 43%. As for a marked recovery in commodities, it's unrealistic to expect China alone to be the saviour, regardless of any government intervention. It's important to remember that the export segment of the market, which is driven by the US, Europe and other Southeast Asian economies, is still going to be soft and probably soft until the back end of next year. So it really doesn't matter what the government does in terms of f fiscal spending in the near term. You need to see the global growth environment start to improve also in order to see China get back on the track of higher growth. That is, if China can navigate the currents of social unrest now flowing, as workers in their tens of thousands face a sack from bankrupt factories. This is Beijing's biggest concern. Investors are indeed braced for a tough year across the board.